Today, I'm going to explain the movie Stanley Ka Daba, released in the year 2011. Stanley Fernandez is a fourth grader at an all-boys school in Mumbai. He's an imaginative kid who frequently improvises absurd but interesting stories to tell in class. This quality of his makes him well-liked among his peers. At the beginning of the film, Stanley walks into the school with bruises on his face. He's an hour early, so he keeps himself entertained by making strange noises until his friends arrive. Then he leads the entire class to sing a song. The English teacher, Rosie, shows genuine love and care towards the kids and teaches in a fun way which makes her everyone's favorite. Rosie notices the bruises on Stanley's face and worriedly asks him how he got them. Stanley makes up yet another one of his innovative stories and claims that his mother flew out of a bus to catch him, but couldn't, and hence he fell on the road. Rosie and his peers laugh and forget to ask him how he actually got the bruises. She sends him to the bathroom to wash his face, where Stanley meets his Hindi teacher, Mr. Verma. Verma is a shameless glutton who eyes everyone's lunchboxes called Daba. Because of his unlikable and cantankerous personality, He's known as Caduce among the students. He asks Stanley to get back to his class immediately. Following that is the science teacher, Mrs. Iyer's class. She notices that a few pages from Stanley's book are missing. When asked, he claims that his little sister tore them apart. The teacher lets it slide this time, but asks him to be more careful. After that is the Hindi class taught by Caduce. He has a mouth full of tobacco that restricts him from talking clearly, but he couldn't care less about the quality of education he provides. The only thing Caduce cares about is the children's lunch boxes that contain mostly home-cooked, delicious food. It's a trend for everyone in the school, including the teachers, to bring food to be eaten during lunch. Caduce never brings his daba, but lusts over everyone else's to the point that children dread him coming to their class during the lunch break. As he's teaching, a kid in the class secretly opens his lunchbox and takes a pinch out of his lunch. Kadus gets a whiff of the food and can no longer focus on teaching them. He inquires who opened their daba, but no one replies. Desperate to eat something, he leaves the class and goes to the teacher's room. Since he can't bring his own food, he searches around the room and finds a lunchbox full of jalabis. He devours them and puts the lunchbox back before anyone can see him. During the lunch break, the kids finally open their lunchboxes, revealing several different types of food they've brought for the day. While everyone else devours theirs, Stanley walks around the classroom looking at them. He never brings a lunchbox to school, but unlike Kadus, Stanley doesn't ask his friends to share with him. His friend Amon questions him about what he's going to eat, to which Stanley says he's about to buy street food from outside the school. Amon offers him to have some of his food because his mother packed a lot. However, Kadus stops them from sharing and belittles Stanley for never bringing his own daba. After stopping the poor kid from eating, the teacher shamelessly asks the students for a share of their food, much to their annoyance. Stanley, on the other hand, drinks a lot of tap water, having lied about wanting to eat street food. For the rest of the day, he asks his friends for water and drinks it to keep himself from getting hungry. After school, the children line up in front of a store to buy chips and drinks, but Stanley, who hasn't eaten anything the entire day, simply walks back home. The following day at school, Stanley and his bench partner get into an argument because their arms collide when they write. Mrs. Iyer sends them outside the class without asking them what the cause of the problem is. During the lunch break, Stanley doesn't bring his lunchbox again, but this time, a kid shares some of his food with him, without Caduce knowing. In the teacher's room, everyone's eating off their own lunchbox, except Caduce. When offered cookies by his colleague, he initially pretends to be reluctant. His fellow teachers know well enough that he won't refuse to eat even if he was held at gunpoint. When they do not offer him food, he inquires what they're eating and looks at them longingly, to the point that they look greedy if they don't offer him some. Everyone is fed up with his behavior, but no one has called him out for his gluttony yet. Later, during his class, Stanley and his bench partner get into an argument yet again because of their elbows colliding. Caduce finds out Stanley is left-handed and orders him to use his right hand instead. 
The boys decide to play football after school and invite Stanley as well. Initially, he declines because he would have to call his mother. Amon gives him a phone hidden in a secret compartment in his bag. Stanley pretends to call someone and claims that his mother allowed him to stay out longer. After school, the boys play, eat, and have a lot of fun together. The following day, Rosie marks Stanley's essay and laughs at his hilarious style of writing. Impressed by the creativity, she even hands him a toffee to praise his work. She also informs the kids that after Christmas break, they'll have to stay at school for longer hours for extra classes. She asks them to bring bigger lunchboxes because they might get hungry throughout the day. Rosie too notices Stanley and his mate struggling to write. On finding out he's left-handed, she simply makes them switch places and solves the problem that the other teachers didn't even acknowledge. On December 12th, Stanley remembers Rosie's birthday and recites a self-written funny poem for her. Rosie laughs at his cuteness and hands him a bar of chocolate. Later, we see him sharing the chocolate with all of his friends. The first day after Christmas break, everyone's parents cook a lot of delicious food so the kids won't be left hungry for the extra classes. Their lunch boxes are kept in front of the class, which Caduce cannot help but notice. He's especially interested in Amon's box that has four compartments. He can hardly teach because the boxes distract him every two seconds. Before the lunch break, he's in another class at the other end of the school. Instead of teaching, he compares the lunch boxes and talks about food, eagerly waiting to devour Amon's meal. As soon as the period ends, he runs to Stanley's class, but is stopped by Mrs. Iyer on the way. When he finally reaches the classroom, the food is all gone. An enraged Caduce cannot take his anger out on the kids because the food was meant for them. But upon realizing that the food was shared with Stanley, he accuses him of leeching off his friends. The poor kid is left humiliated after the encounter. The following day, he avoids eating from his friends' lunchboxes, saying that he's going home to enjoy a hot meal prepared by his mother. In his place, Caduce joins the students and devours their food disgustingly. This goes on for a few days until one of the boys notices that Stanley doesn't actually go home to get food. Instead, he wanders around the nearby streets. Later that day, they call him out on his bluff, but Stanley recovers, claiming that his parents have flown to Delhi so no one cooks for him at home. His friends offer to help him, planning to hide from Caduce and eat together until his parents return from their trip. The next day, Caduce excitedly comes to the classroom, only to find it empty. He searches for the kids all around the school, but to no avail. Later, he inquires where they were, to which the boys claim that they were asked to eat outside so the classroom won't be littered. For the next few days, they tell him a different location each time, and Caduce is left hungry every day. He grows irritated and impatient with time. One day, he finally finds them eating on the rooftop and sees that they had been hiding from him for Stanley. In a fit of rage, he belittles Stanley and orders him to either bring his own daba or stop coming to school. His harsh words hit home for Stanley, and he stops coming to school starting the next day. During his absence, the audition for an inter-school dance performance takes place. His friends know that Stanley would be the perfect candidate, but they don't know how to get a hold of him. They even try to call his mother's phone number, but find out that the number doesn't exist at all. They believe it to be some kind of mistake and dismiss it. The teachers start to miss his presence in the class, including Caduce, who feels bad that he lashed out at the kid. One day after school, the guys find Stanley outside and tell him about the dance program. Following that, Stanley goes to the location where the rehearsals are taking place. He watches the children practicing from afar and learns the moves secretly. As days pass, Rosie misses him in class and is worried about him. Amon and the group finally tell her the reason behind Stanley's absence. Rosie is disgusted and horrified at the fact that Caduce messed with a student's education because of a lunchbox. During the lunch break, she approaches him and offers him a box of cake. When Caduce pretends to hesitate, she asks him if he feels accomplished after bullying his students. She even calls him out for being a glutton and threatens to tell the principal about this. A scared and embarrassed Caduce begs her not to do so. 
That afternoon, Stanley goes to the rehearsals again and starts practicing alone. A dance choreographer notices him and invites him to participate officially. The following day, Stanley brings his own daba to school for the first time in his life. It too has four compartments, all filled with delicious homemade food. He hands the daba to Caduce, asking for permission to continue coming to school. An embarrassed Caduce cannot help but cry. The principal finds out about the matter and calls Stanley and his group to the office. He informs them that Caduce has resigned from his position and left a handwritten apology letter to Stanley. In the letter, he promises to never return to the school again. On the day of the dance program, Stanley is made the host because of his charms. Everyone praises him in his performance, much to his delight. After the program, Rosie approaches him and offers to give him a ride home. Stanley declines, claiming that his mother is waiting for him in a car. However, he's proven to have lied when a while later, the principal drives him home. Finally, it is revealed that Stanley is actually an orphan child laborer at a restaurant run by his uncle. The man slaps the kid for being late and asks him to get to work in an instant. He has physically abused Stanley several times, which explains the frequent bruises on his face. Stanley wants to fit in with his friends, hence he creates bizarre stories about his parents. However, since he has no one to cook for him, he could never bring food to the school. The only person who sympathizes with him is the restaurant's cook, Akram. He was the one who packed some restaurant leftovers for Kadus. He promises to do it every day without his uncle knowing. The next day, Stanley goes to school with a daba full of food made by Akram. He shares it with his friends while boasting about how his mother prepared everything. In the last montage, we see him share the daba with the school teachers, his friends, and the janitor. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.